Okay, so we've got our pig heart here. And like I said, you can see uh, those blood vessels on the top have been cut off uh, when they were removing the heart from the pig. If we're looking at the heart here, this is the front side of the heart. This is the back side of the heart. This white stuff around the heart, this is fat. Okay, so we can see quite a bit of fat here on this heart. That uh, means that our pig was nice and fat. Um, up top, just for, or up top, in the front, just for a little anatomy here. Um, this right here, underneath this, we'll find our septum. That is that big, thick muscle that separates the heart in two halves. So you can see that there are clearly two halves on the heart. This is the right side. This is the left side. And notice how much larger the left side is than the right side. Okay, that is because this left side only has to pump blood to the lungs. The right side, or left side, has to pump it to the whole rest of the body. Now, if I'm looking at this, I can start to probe my way into certain areas. I don't want to poke myself, but... Right here, we have got our vena cava, which leads into the right atrium, which is the top chamber of the heart. Notice how small it is compared to the ventricle here. Um, we have got, this is the top of the, or start of the aorta here, I believe. Nope, sorry, that is also part of the vena cava. Here we go. Here's the start of the aorta. Notice it has been cut off. We've got those pulmonary arteries or veins that lead back into the other side of the heart. Okay. So, vena cava, aorta, let's use this, aorta. This is the pulmonary artery, and here we have pulmonary veins. Okay. You want me to cut the thing open? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wipe off my hands. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cut. I'm going to cut right down. Uh, those two halves, right down what we call the coronary artery, because the heart, although it, its job is to pump blood, which takes nutrients and oxygen to every cell in our body, the heart is also a muscle. It is also part of the body, and because of that, it needs blood as well. It needs to feed its tissues as well. So, if I look at this, this runs all the way down to what we call the apex of the heart. It's the top part and it branches off into other blood vessels so that each cell in the heart can get its nutrients. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the scalpel, and I'm just going to cut right along that. Be careful, I don't want to cut off any of my fingers. Otherwise, we'll see what the inside of Mr. Garrett's fingers look like. Now, this doesn't look like a whole lot on the inside here, but if you notice, look at how thick this is. I mean, if I were to hold this this way, I mean, that is a very thick wall of muscle there. Uh, the heart needs to be very thick, very strong, because it pumps all the time. It is made of that special cardiac muscle. It is involuntary, and that's good, because you don't want to have to think about pumping your heart. Now, I'm going to cut into the right side of the heart here first. 
I'm going to try to just hollow this out just a little bit. So this is the septum. It is what, it's that big thick muscle that divides the heart into its two halves. Okay, I am in. Let me just clear this out a little bit so that you can get a better view. Ah. All right, so I am in the right ventricle here now. First thing I want to show you this right here, this is blood. This is clotted blood. Inside blood are these special cells. They're called platelets. And it's just like if you get a cut and you're, eventually your, your cut doesn't bleed forever, that blood starts to come together. It starts to clot. And it stops that bleeding. Well, when this animal died, its natural response was to clot that blood so that it would stop bleeding. Now, unfortunately, some of that blood clotted or stopped inside the heart. And this is, it's very sticky. Okay? So we might see some of that inside of this heart because this is not a preserved specimen. It, it wasn't dipped in chemicals or anything. This came right from someone who had a pig, and the pig died. Now, inside the ventricle, we don't usually talk about these things, but we've got some thread-like or string-like structures in here, you can see me, maybe, pulling on them a little bit there. These are called the chordae tendinae. And what they are, they're tendons. And if you remember when we talked about the skeletal and muscular system, these tendons um, will pull on the valves of the heart. They're the ones that are in charge of opening and closing the valve so that blood does not flow backwards, so that it keeps blood flowing in one direction. Um, and so if we look, they're connected to... I can find one here. It's a lot smaller than the deer heart that I just did. Ah. Uh, First of all, I'm going to show you, if I take my probe, I can come out the top here. What this, where this is going, blood is being pumped through this right ventricle, and it gets pumped out through this pulmonary artery here, and it gets taken to each lung. Okay, inside the lungs. That blood drops off carbon dioxide that is a waste product um, from cellular respiration. Those cells um, give that off, and it picks up oxygen. Now, after it has picked up oxygen, it comes back. I'm going to flip it over. It comes back to the heart around the backside here into the left side here, the left atrium. So this is the pulmonary vein. It takes oxygenated or oxygen-rich blood back into the heart. And now we are inside the left atrium. Hey, um, Elector, would you shut that door for me, please? Thanks. Now I'm going to cut even more. I'm going to take a little bit more off the septum here to get inside the left portion of the heart. Remember, look at how much larger the left side of the heart is than the right side. And this is because, again, this side is in charge of pumping to the rest of the body. This side just has to pump to the lungs. So it has to be a lot stronger, a lot more muscular. So I'm going to try to hollow this out, again, without losing a finger. Now, it looks like it's cutting pretty easy. That's because my scalpel here is very, very sharp.
There we go. So now I'm inside the left ventricle, and here we see even more of those chordae tendinae, those that control all of the valves and the contractions of the heart. Um, so blood on the left side of the heart flows into the left atrium. Then it is going to flow, if you follow my finger there, you can start to see my blue glove, go down through this valve into the left ventricle here. And look at all of those chordae tendinae that are attached to that valve. So they're in charge of telling it when it needs to open and close. If I want to take my probe, I can take it. It should end up coming out of yep, the pulmonary vein there. Now, blood in the left atrium, in the left side of the heart, is oxygenated, meaning it is full of oxygen, and the blood needs to pump it out so that it can go to every cell in the body, so that it can deliver those, that oxygen, those nutrients that cells need. So it gets pumped out of the left ventricle, and it goes up through the aorta here. Right? So it gets pumped up, goes out through the aorta, which would be right up at the top there. So if I look down, I should, yep, there's my finger. Um, so very quick recap. Front side of the heart, coronary artery. Um, this is the artery that, if it gets blocked, can cause a heart attack because this artery supplies oxygen and nutrients to all parts of the heart. So this would be that blood vessel that would cause a heart attack. Anyway, blood comes in the heart through the vena cava here. It looks like it's been clipped so that both of them are out, but... Anyway, goes into the right atrium. This is deoxygenated de or oxygen poor blood. Uh, those valves open, push the blood into the right ventricle down here. Right ventricle takes and pumps blood out. Oop, oop. There we go. To the lungs where it drops off carbon dioxide, picks up oxygen, comes back around through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, into the left ventricle, and then finally up and out the aorta here.